Hello everyone and welcome to Learn to Learn. If you have been wondering how to learn a language, I have eight exclusive tips for you and one gift for free. Yeah, you heard it right, one gift for free. So keep watching until the end, let's go. Okay, number one, you have to know where you want to start. You have to ask yourself why you are learning the language and what is your final goal. For example, when I learned uh, Spanish, I wanted to be able to speak Spanish fluently. Uh, I reached level B2 in one year. It was my goal. I was very happy. And then I learned Swedish. I am learning Swedish now, as you know, if you watch my previous videos. And I want to learn Swedish because I just want to understand the language, understand the way it's written and the songs. So when you start to learn a language, it's very important to set up goals. Why do you want to learn a language? Uh, is it for traveling? Is it for a partner? Is it for a job? Anything, but you need to have a clear goal. The second tip I would like to give you is choose your right material. So too many people make the mistake to choose like five or six material, like having one app, uh, two books, one grammar book, one conversation book, and this is why too much. You should focus on only one or maximum two uh, materials that you like. Uh, for example, me, I used Babel plus um, a storybook in Spanish when I learned Spanish and that's it. Otherwise, if you have five or six resources, you will not go uh, as far as you would if you had only one resources. That's the matter of having only one resources. Better to have one app like Babel where you follow the path from the beginning to the end rather than having three books and doing one chapter uh, with one book uh, on Monday and then forgetting about this book and doing something else on Thursday uh, it's, it's better really to go uh, deep in a book and material you are choosing. Third tip is don't rely only on apps. So I know it's a little bit of a contradiction with what I said previously but uh, if you are using one app, it's really nice to have next to you another book, a book and not something digital. Uh, why? Because, uh, you know, apps are built in a way to create instant gratification, faking a little bit your progress like Duolingo is doing, for example, with their day strikes or something like this. So uh, they make you believe you are learning so fast, but in reality, the progression is much slower than they pretend it goes. So better to have a textbook and you can also adjust the pace of what you are learning depending on using uh, the app one day and a textbook the other day. You can choose, but don't use only one app. Number four, make sure you are practicing the four skills of the language, reading, listening, writing and speaking. Of course, it's captain obvious. Uh, it seems to be uh, very obvious for everyone, but sometimes we feel a bit too comfortable on only practicing listening skills and forgetting about speaking. So it's very important to keep this balance between the four skills. Trust me, it's very important. Number five. Pronunciation matters. So let's uh, have a little experience together. Look at this sentence and try to find out what does it mean in your language. If you don't have any idea, let's listen to the pronunciation of this sentence and words. Jag är så glad att se dig. So you see, you can realize that if you have an idea of the pronunciation of these uh, words and sentences, you already understand much more than you think. So pronunciation and the way of acquiring the phonology of the language is extremely important in order to improve by 400% your uh, comprehension skills. Number six, create a language learning environment. So make sure in your house you have a little posters that you printed uh, 
for the internet, about tenses, about vocabulary that you can change, that you can move in your house. Uh, make sure also to join a language Facebook group. Huh? Like this, when you scroll down on your social media, you have access, the language comes to you. So it's very nice. Uh, every day when I scroll down on my social media, for example, I see articles in Swedish, words, uh, people talking. So unconsciously, I have access to the language for free. Uh, when you go to train for jogging or whatever, listen to podcasts, listen to music, Uh, make sure you are in this linguistic bath all the time. You have to be surrounded by the language if you want to acquire it. This is very important. Number... Oh, no, seven. Be patient. Learning a language takes time and consistency. Wow, I could say it in the first time. Very good, huh? Uh, yes, so you need to be consistent and you need a lot of patience because you will see sometimes words that you still don't know after uh, looking for the meaning five times or you already forgot the conjugation in passé composé of faire, for example. And this is normal, you know, you need to practice again and again and again. It's like going to the gym. Uh, if you don't have consistency, it's not gonna work. But be patient. Look at this map. The FSI, the Foreign Service Institute, created uh, a lot of language courses that you can find for free on the internet. And they classified the language in five categories. So in red, in the map, you can see the easiest language to learn for an English speaker. Uh, you would need approximately 600 hours to learn one of the language in red 600 hours so you have to realize if you train one hour a day alone how many days it could take for you and that's why you need to be patient even though you think the language will be easy to acquire it's not true uh, category two you can see german category three 900 hours to master the language in category three Uh, category 4, you will need 1,100 hours. You find a lot of European language in this category. They are in a map in green, as you can see. And you can find in uh, category 4, even more difficult, Finnish and Hungarian, as well as Estonian. You will need approximately 88 weeks of study which is uh, 2200 hours for a native english speaker so you see it's a long journey it requires patience and the only thing i can tell you to make you feel more comfortable with learning a language yes it's gonna take some time yes it's going to be long but be happy with the result with the result you have Uh, week after week. So as you can see, it requires patience and consistency. Consistency, Kurde. Number eight, and this is one of the most important tips I'm going to give you today, is organize your time. You have to organize your time. You cannot go all over the place and say, Okay, Monday, I have nothing to do, I will study verbs. Oh, Tuesday, maybe I'm going to watch a movie. Wednesday, I will do one lesson on Duolingo about colors. No, it's not gonna work if it's uh, like this. So you need really to organize your time and organize how you are going to practice the four skills. And here we are. I have an amazing gift for you. If, look, if, you, if you click here, or maybe here, I don't know. I don't know it's going to work, but You will see a link. You have to click on it and you will find an amazing gift. Look at this. The Language Study Planner is a very nice tool I created to learn a language and to uh, see for you uh, how you will practice every day on daily basis the four skills. So as you can see at the bottom, you have Uh, speaking, listening, reading, writing, and the idea is to be involved with the language every day. So 
So here is a little example I made. And for every single day, you will write what you did or what you are planning to do as a goal and enter the skills, the skill or the skills you practiced. For, for example, I enter something like Monday the second online lesson with a tutor, 45 minutes. You should put the length of the lessons. It's very important because in my opinion, you should be involved with the language at least 40 minutes a day. It's very, very important uh, to keep some consistency. That's what is relevant in this topic. Uh, yeah, so this tool will help you to organize your week, your month, and see if you did enough or need to practice uh, more skills than another. For example, if you check too many times, I don't know, listening, maybe you will realize at the end of the month that you need to practice a little bit more, maybe reading. So it depends on, on how you organize your week. Here is a blank document you need. With this document, you organize your month of study with the language. You can plan ahead or do it uh, daily after your practice. Something really useful I use myself uh, to organize a little bit my uh, learning journey. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it was useful for you once again and uh, I really hope you will enjoy the free gift I gave you today. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what are your, your best practices uh, to learn a language. Maybe you could give us some extra, extra tips. So I'm very curious about it. So please let me know and we can have a little conversation in the comments. See you soon. Bye. Good?